Now we know to trust our harness and to not use our hands to catch our falls. Next thing on the list is uh, using the full brake range. Yeah, so once we've got more control of our hands and we're not doing these involuntary movements, we can actually start to use them as they're intended, and that is to brake the paraglider. So most people think about beginners not using the full brake range, it being that they only go 30, 40%, and they never go any deeper, because where's the spin and stall point? But actually what gets most people in trouble, and if you like watching the, the crash videos on YouTube, you'll see that it's the zero to 10% brake range, zero to 15%. Because another fear response is we like holding a bit of pressure, and when we get scared, <gasps> we'll pull a little more pressure, or we might grab the risers, or as I said before, push on our, um, our, seat, um, off our footboard if we have a pod. So in, in these moments of fear, we actually have to learn to release fully, because if we ever go negative with our glider, so if we ever spin, stall, or go parachutal, the tiny bit of brake that you have on can keep you there. So to stall your glider might be all the way down here, but to stay in parachutal, can just be a bit of pressure on the brakes. And when it starts to go a bit funky, we just wanna refine the pressure that we always fly with and we'll get ourselves into a cascade event. So we really need to learn that zero point. And on every paraglider it's different. If you change harnesses a lot, if you change wings, then your, um, your pulleys are gonna be at a different place. So you just need to learn that zero point every time. So if you get yourself into a negative situation, Boom! You can put your hands up, you can let the glider dive at the horizon before taking that power away. Now of course that means we do need to learn the deeper parts of the brake range. And your full brake range is from the pulleys right down past your hips until your arms are straight and then back up. Now if you want to know where to put your hands in the deeper parts of the brake range, it's close to your body and down through what I call the power zone. So if you want to try it yourself, sit on a seat, grab your seat and try and lift your body weight up. Wherever you grab the seat is where you want your hands. So you would never grab your seat in front and try and lift your body weight. We're simply not strong enough like that. And it's the same thing. You can't grab something out here and lift yourself up just with your shoulder muscles. You're not strong enough. So if you're doing powerful catches, then you want to be in by your side and then down through this power zone, which is close to your body and around your, your hip area. You know, we're simply not strong enough anywhere else and we also don't have the brake range. As I said before, if we're out here, the brake range is very different to out here compared to down here. You have to remember as well with a um, brake input that it's a brake and a release and the release time uh, of an input is just as important as when you've put that brake on. So you're only using the full brake range if you not only pull it, but release it at the right time as well. There we go. Cool.